You know, taking it to the streets is always an interesting event because you never quite know what you're going to run into. And when you're doing all this kind of on the fly, as we call it, you basically have to trust in the Lord with all your heart. You have to think not in your own understanding, but kind of in all your ways acknowledge Him so that He can direct your path. Because you see, if you choose the place, if you choose the time, if you choose the way, then you're really not trusting, are you? You're kind of picking and choosing what you want to do. Kind of like leaning in your own understanding. Maybe not trusting Him to the degree that He's trying to bring out or give you some kind of understanding. What I like to do is kind of like throw it to the wind. Let's see what God may do. I mean, don't you think that God, being who He is, probably is better in control of our lives than we are. Now, if God isn't real, then I think we're all in trouble. If God can't be seen, touched, felt, or in some way demonstrated, then I think we're pretty foolish, aren't we? In other words, I have to be pretty stupid to be sitting around doing this for no reason at all. Matter of fact, I'd have to be some kind of idiot. Well, maybe I am. Maybe, as some people would say, you should lock that guy up because he believes in something he can't see, touch, or feel. Two out of three is good enough for me. Because, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I can see, touch, and feel my God. Matter of fact, if I didn't prove to him in more than just simply faith and believing, somehow, I probably, as cynical as I am, would not have come to the realization of Jesus that I did. But you see, that's me. That may not be you. Maybe you need something more, and you need to prove to yourself just how real or unreal God is. And sometimes I understand that. I know how it is to be walking along in life, you know, doing your own thing and trying to figure all these things out. When in reality, all you want is someone to just say, hey, I'm okay. Are you okay? Well, maybe I'm not. You see, every one of us at some point in time need help. We need to know that there's something more than what we're doing. If everything's working out in our life, hey, you know, we're going along and we think, man, I got it. I'm cooking. I'm cruising. I'm doing. Matter of fact, I'm living it. And you know, that's what happens sometimes in life is that things in our life go so well, go so good that we think we've arrived and you know we go along and we enjoy what we're doing and we're kind of like killing it you know i mean we got the good job right i mean hey you got a good job you got a job we get the good life you know we're we're like you know the two car garage with two cars you know the married and two people in a family you know that's kind of nice you know we got two two incomes you know we got kids or maybe you don't Maybe you're single and you're cruising it, you know, and you got your, you know, you got your money and you spend it the way you want to, and you got your honey, you know, and you're doing your thing, you know, you're like a bee in a, in a hive, you know, you're enjoying your honey and you're enjoying your work and you're doing your own thing, and that's cool. Hey, everything looks good. Everything seems good. Matter of fact, what I can see, what I can touch, and what I can feel is good. Then all of a sudden, something I didn't see coming happens. <gasps> Oh my God, literally. And suddenly, the things that you can see, touch, and feel are taken away. They're removed. A crisis has come in your life, and you go, uh-oh, now what do I do? And you don't have the answer. That's kind of where, you know, you get to where you decide whether or not you believe in God or not. Because sometimes, sooner or later, you're going to run in life to something you can't handle, something you can't deal with, something that goes beyond your ability to every day be a part of. Sometimes that may happen, you know, early in your life, like for me it did. Sometimes it may happen later in your life. It could be a cancer or some health scare. It could be the death of a loved one. It could be that, you know, maybe you went through your entire life successful, doing your own thing. Being your own boss, accomplishing your own purposes. And then you looked around and you said, Is that all there is? 
until you, until you check it out, you're never going to figure out what life's all about. You got to check it out in order to figure it out. You know, because sooner or later, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're going to check out. And until you check in with God, guess what? When your ticket is punched, uh-oh, the lottery came and you didn't win. Hmm, that's not good if you're dying. And it's not good if you're dead. So maybe, just maybe some people, they might have a hand on this thing, you know, God or religion or faith. Maybe they have some kind of purpose or design. Maybe maybe they got a little more of an inkling or kind of like a sprinkling of what they think is going on. Maybe they're wrong. I mean, don't you think that the possibility exists that a person could be wrong? I meet lots of people every day that I know, hey, they're right about some things and they're wrong about some things. Sometimes they got it and sometimes they don't. So how do you know? How can you prove to yourself that it's true or it's not? Because you see, that's what I think everyone ought to do. Everyone ought to take the time. And everyone ought to make the time to figure out what's right for them and what's wrong. And you know what? That might change over time. Because sometimes people think they know what they're doing when they don't. And so they say, well, that works for you, but it don't work for me. That's good for you, but it's not good for me. Well, quite frankly, until you prove it to yourself, you don't know. How do you know? I only know one way to do that. I only know one way to check it out. I only know one way to figure it out. And that means that you got to do it. And if you do it, then you prove it. You see, when you do it, you prove it. When you don't do it, you're going by somebody else's opinion. And nobody should go by someone else's opinion. Well, maybe to start with, you might want to, but until you can actually demonstrate for yourself, prove to yourself that something's true, don't do it. Don't believe it. Don't go for it. But I gotta say, for me, I'm real cynical, so I went out of my way to prove what I believe in. I know who I talk to. I know what I get from God. I know why I believe like I believe. And so in daily life, giving some kind of insight into what I read and what I see and what I do, I like to kind of like take a snapshot, you know, kind of like a, a better view of where I'm coming from and where I'm going. I like to kind of know what it is. God knows about me. Because if he's right, then I could rearrange my life according to what he wants me to do. If I'm right, then I get to pick and choose what I want to do. And that's kind of what some people do in religion. You know, they, they kind of pick and choose what they want to do because of what they don't want to do. You know, they don't want to do this, so they turn around and do that. When they don't want to do that, they turn around and do this. Sometimes they do a little of both. Because they figure out what works best for them. And that's all that I'm really saying is that what works for you, I mean, literally, what works for you is what you're going to do. And if it don't work, don't do it. I got a real simple kind of like philosophy about, you know, kind of street lingo and kind of like talking about God. It's like, well, if it's God, it's God. And you can say God. If it's Jesus, it's Jesus. You can say Jesus. And hey, if you don't know Jesus, according to what Jesus said, you ain't going where he's at. So if you don't want to be where Jesus is at, don't follow Jesus. Me, I want to be where he's at because of what he's done for me. So looking in that, today I'm kind of looking at, in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. Oh, so I could live unto God instead of living unto sin. But I kind of like sin sometimes, you know, don't you? <laughs> Man, it's some good stuff sometimes, you know. You get into some good stuff and you think, wow, this is cool. Until it kills you. <laughs> Oops. There are consequences, I think. Hmm. Sometimes that's a challenge. He was numbered with the transgressors. 
Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Wow. Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed by this man because he continueth by this man where do you go by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified hmm. this man because he continueth forever hath an unchangeable priesthood wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them while we were yet sinners Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him for as much as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Huh. It kind of sounds like, you know, when you when you wrap it, jap it, kind of, you know, wrap it up and put it into a different box. You know, kind of like apply it or kind of like think about it, kind of consider it kind of make it home, you know, right here. And you kind of figure out that, hey, you know, he did this so that we could get this, so that if I want this, then I got to do this because he's done that, you know, and it's kind of like he died. Okay, I got that part. He did it so that I could get something, and what I get will take me from what I don't want or what God wants for me instead of what I want for me. Well, okay. So there's kind of a, a wrestling match here going on that I gotta not want what I want, but I gotta want what he wants. And I don't know that I want what he wants. But if I want what he wants for me, then I gotta do what he tells me to do. Because he kinda like told me that he did it for me and that he's gonna take me from what was to what is, and what is is what he's saying it is. I got it. Okay. Did you get it? I figured that out. So, I guess the part that I'm going to have a problem with is, does God know what he's talking about? Hmm. You see, if God created me, then he knows what he's talking about. If he didn't create me, and there's no God, hey, that message means absolutely nothing to me, man. I'm checking it, but I ain't living it, so guess what? It doesn't have much to deal with my heart. But, hmm. If I'm buying into this kind of like God created everything, I mean everything, then he'd have to be big enough to handle somebody like me. Or deal with the things that I'm dealing with, which he said he did. So, if God is big enough, and if God is really God like he says he is, then I guess I'd have to figure out whether or not that's true. That he's already done everything for me to do. That really I have to make the choice of whether I want to do my own thing or do his thing. Because in that he died for me. That means he, when he rose, he rose for me. That means he kind of like is not dead. Oh, well if he ain't dead then I can talk to him. Hmm. Putting two and two together, I kind of got to figure this one out. That means maybe there's more to this see, touch, and feel than I think because Maybe I can see, touch, and feel God. Maybe I could talk to God. Maybe I could find out if Jesus really is alive. Because, you see, if he ain't, I ain't messing around with this. But you know what? Since I personally have done that, I think you personally should too. I think you ought to take the time, maybe make the time to check it out. I think you should check it and see if maybe God is alive. Or, if he's dead, hey... Better left unread, right? Because you sure don't want to mess around with what they keep saying about this heaven and hell thing. But I think if God's big enough, if God is smart enough, if God is really the God that he says he is, then I think he can prove to me who he is, what he is, and the fact that he lives. Because you see, if God can't prove that to me, then nothing that I say, do, or believe in is going to make any sense at all. Unless God makes it real in my life. You know what? I don't know about you, but for me, that's what he did. So when I checked it out, I checked in 
And because I checked in, he told me what I need to be. He told me so much so that he showed me. And because he showed me, I know. Now the question is, what do you know?